Hello everybody, welcome to week number two, the season number two has begun. Action versus best is going to be our first game of the night. A ZVP on Citadel to start things off. Let's go. We've got the lineup here. An absolutely stacked line of pro players here. I mean, Action and Best, two of the best, two of the greatest players that we have in the ASL right now, but there's just so many players of note here. Snow, Beast, who's fantastic right now. The only thing that is sticking out to me is maybe a little bit out of place is we've got Speed and Royal there in the Terran lineup. Yeah, I'm okay with Royal, but yeah, Speed is obviously like, uh, let's give this guy uh, a little bit of time to shine on the stage kind of type deal. And I, I can't really blame it. I mean, some of these other guys need, you know, a little bit of screen time, but uh, might come back to bite them in this week. One other thing to mention, guys, the all kill prize is now at 2 million won. And this week, the sponsor HMall is putting up some of those USB towers as an additional prize. So no Korean beef this week. The USB towers, the Tello towers are on the line though here. So these guys are gonna be extra motivated. You wanna get one of those, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, I think hosting is pretty big in Korea culture. So like, you know, having that like ability to charge all your friends' phones when they come over and what have you. So yeah, pretty convenient and a nice little addition to your home base, I imagine. So each of these players wouldn't wanna snag one of those up. Not only takes up like 20% of your desk space, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's a small price to pay for the ability to like charge anything anytime. Yeah, I mean, it's not my cup of tea, but I think that uh, these Korean players might be interested in picking up one of those. I think that's what HMall is hoping, that uh, the fans of the show will uh, support those products and uh, pick them up for their, uh, their home base setup. We got action here, trying to block this pylon going down, but Best has a new strategy here, a new uh, cannon rush that I don't think we've seen before. Yeah, I mean, we don't usually see too many cannon rushes these days, just because Zergs have gotten a lot better at dealing with it, but in this case, we're going to be seeing an attempt at drilling over two drones at once using the gas uh, trick. Uh, looks like he's going to be successful as well, so I think he... Oh no, the drone's not actually quite sliding around, so... As... Okay, he does manage to get over here, so he's going to completely shut this down. It's a really nice cleanup from action. This is why we don't see this so often at the very pro level, which is it's the Zergs just so much better at dealing with it these days and being as efficient as possible. Really, really well done there by action. The difficult part about holding a rush like this is that you have to get two drones over on the other mm. side. If a probe and a drone fight head to head, it takes two extra hits from the drone uh, in order to win that fight. So the probe straight up will just kill a drone. Uh, therefore, you have to get two over and Protoss players are very good at blocking that from happening by putting the pylon down over and over again, preventing the drone from getting over easily. Uh, but in that moment, right as he was canceling the pylon in order to start the cannon, Action managed to get that first drone over. He blocks the cannon from coming down and then gets the second drone over as well to help out and kill that off. He hasn't lost a single drone here. He's in a great position now. Yeah, I really like the uh, technique of using the gas geyser to both stack the drone and also glitch the second one over by building the geyser and cancelling it. So it's a nice little trick to get two over in an instant, but he also was very good at catching the probe with some, uh, you know, moving shot drones uh, with his drone at the start. So if, if there was a reason why the second drone couldn't get over, maybe he shaved off enough of the shields to still win that 1v1 fight as well. So it's a nice little insurance policy there, getting as much damage on that as possible. Yeah, it's a little bit tough to, um, to even balance out like that in that way because you as you're glitching over sometimes the probe can get a couple hits on you so you really have to do a lot of damage to it um but here action is actually going to throw down a hydralis den right in the face of best it's not typical of what we see from zerg players but i guess action thinking that you know, there might be uh, a bit of a too much of a delay on his gas so he wouldn't be able to get the layer and the spire out in time to deal with the first corsair he just goes ahead and throws down the hydra den uh, that's going to keep him safe from losing too many overlords here he has an overlord scout flying into the main now and he'll see that best doesn't even have that uh, star 
gate up just yet. Uh, with the horizontal uh, expansion opening as well, uh, this this like 973, it'd probably be a fake 973 just to put on a lot of pressure here, force out a lot of cannons out of best. And he doesn't want to sacrifice this forge and gateway for free, so he's probably going to make a lot of cannons up against the wall now. Yeah, like, he's going to add a, go up to at least three and maybe a fourth as well. And uh, all action wants to do is force as much of a response as possible. Probably won't make more than, say, six to eight hydras, and then we'll go into a bit more of a standard match game after that what i've seen from a lot of these hydra bus fake hydra bus is like three to four hydras but it feels like he's made yeah. more yeah he's he's actually made i think like you said about six so maybe he wants to kill a building at the front is that a possibility well, want, at this at this uh, angle? Yeah, I mean, he, he might he can get the gateway still, I think, um, with range upgrade. But the problem is, is that you want to make at least enough hydras to kind of, you know, threaten the actual hydra bust. Because if you if you min max too much by only making like three, four hydras, he can just maybe can even cancel the third cannon or something. And if he can keep the probe scout alive, then maybe he can min max his defenses too much. You want to at least threaten a real hydra bust here for sure. Well, that's what we've got. That threat here arriving at the front, Zelda. Uh, just gonna chill here in the wall. I thought it might be trying to sneak out the bottom, get around these hydras, and try to deal some damage, but it looks like it's just gonna chill here. Uh, was that another cannon being built at the front? I think he's actually building more cannons, and there's more hydras popping out here as well. Action doing like a fake double or a double fake here, pretending that he's not gonna be going for this hydralist bust and then actually going for it. Um, and this might actually catch action by, or it might catch, catch best by surprise. He doesn't have anything on the map to scout, and here he goes. He's going to run right up and hit this cannon. He has that range upgrade, targeting down a few of the zealots. The zealots are kind of getting in the way. The probes have been pulled. He's going to get another cannon. This is getting really, really bad now. Best with just two cannons remaining. Can he hold on? Really good movement here by action, but he's very low on hydras now. How many does he have popping out to reinforce his position? He has just barely enough to overrun, I think, because there's only one more cannon that's going to be warping in, and it's going to take another, like, 10, 15 seconds to come online. So I actually feel like Action has a really strong timing here. I feel like he can just bully Vesta and slowly whittle down these cannons one at a time, and the clocks that are on these cannons just take so long to finally become active. So it's a lot of uh, timing windows for Action to exploit again and again as he wants, and right now it looks like he's going to try and stay out of the cannon range, just try and whittle down the zealots as much as possible, and then finally try and pounce on these cannons. He's happy to engage when there's only two cannons but you will want to go before these two cannons warp in i imagine yeah here he is getting up right up cozy to the wall at the top there ready to dive forward with the manual move command try to get as close as possible to the cannons and gun them down as quickly as he can the templar archives is just about done and we lost the overlord at the front is there another overlord slowly making its way over here i think there is just behind this hydralis uh, group here at the front is that pylon or is that cannon at the bottom actually not powered anymore that might be unpowered mm, that one, bottom yeah, it yeah it's unpowered right now but for some reason it looks like he doesn't want to pull the trigger he's just going to make a couple of macro hatcheries now and transition i feel yeah, maybe he feels like he's done enough damage that he doesn't want to risk committing and like losing too many of these hydras and then ultimately potentially throwing the game if it, the bus just barely didn't pay off so it seems like he's kind of playing the safer route here and like gonna just soft container these hydras instead yeah this is uh the tightrope walk between protoss and zerg action's done a great job of it so far but did he do enough did he get enough damage here did he force enough cannons did he kill enough cannons did he kill enough uh probes there in the early game looks like he's gonna block the natural here getting into the main he's using the overlord to kind of force the zealots to not attack or not allow the dark the, the zealots to actually attack those drones they're pretty decent block he manages to get rid of that with only losing one drone and not too significant a delay on those hydras making their way here to the front you typically want to pull the hydras all the way to the back of the main so that those hydras can't make their way up here and it gives you a little bit of an opportunity wow. to try and bust bunch of cannons going down here in the main did he see a spire there at the front no i think he, i think he's just worried he did, the thing is is that he didn't get the scout and he saw right. the second gas mining so he's just oh he's just thinking uh oh like right now he could just be ogre zerging me and i'm just dead and if i don't do any kind of muta defense I, i'm sailless he's thinking I, if i don't make this i have no scout i have no chance of defending mutas so he has to do this 
<gasps> That's a huge storm, though, going to be stopping up a lot of those hydras. But already, the forces of best have been whittled down at the front. Look at the supplies right now, 66 to 60s, is indicative of quite a strong Zerg advantage right now. So best is not going to be able to move out for quite some time. And all these cannons that he's made are gateways that could have been. And so now he's not going to have the production needed to kind of break out and actually do some kind of counter threat to action for quite a while. That block in the natural, not allowing the scout to happen into the main, actually turning out to be a huge boon to the position here of action who is just pumping out tons of drones and hydras he's not going for that attack into the main he's not ogre zerging him and this dark archon it can be useful but it's not what you need uh, as the protoss player right now he needs a force that can actually push away uh, this army before the containment begins and i think this containment's going to get up pretty well here a lot of lurkers being made and there's just no timing for best to try and push out well, he's geared up for anti-muter defense, and now he won't have the gas resources dedicated to enough high Templars and what have you to actually break out. He's not going to have enough Dragoons. He's got no chance of, like, going into Reavers now. He's going to be relying purely on um, Storm and uh, Goons to break out, and he won't have enough of either, I don't imagine. It doesn't look like he's going to have enough of anything here to break through does he even have eight gateways looks like he does have eight gates in the main that's the typical number that you need here on two bases but time is starting to run out we've passed that 11 minute mark a fourth base is going down for action he's extending this lead further and further and every moment that this continues he's going to get into a better and better position the first observer is out this is a big moment for best can he actually start to break this contain or will he lose his observer good pulling back on that but he loses a templar i feel like the only way that best can really have a good trade here is if he gets lucky and say like maelstrom's a pack of lurkers after they hatch or something and then get like some real high value storm targets uh, as a result but i don't see that happening right now there's not enough dragoons to come down here and start to break open this position he's doing a pretty good job of coming here and blanketing the zerg forces with these sonic storms but he doesn't quite have enough high templars in reserve to keep this uh, chain going and starting to slowly whittle down the zerg over time action only just narrowly like uh, trailing behind him in supply right now just 10 supply behind and the best is only just now coming online of like 110 supply with all these gateways but this is at 12 minutes like he should have had about 140 supply or so a minute ago he doesn't have that and now we got action coming into the main base with some mobile this could be a fake just to threaten like a, a fake doom drop into the main base to kind of scare best but he's not going to be uh falling for that he's not he's going to just call the bluff and instead try and make a move up and look at all those just goons exploding lots of blue goo and he's still wants to commit to breaking out he's going to choose the southern threshold as the weakest point the chink in the armor that he wants to try and eliminate does throw down a maelstrom and a storm follow-up to try and wheel down enough of these like forces to make something happen but it's not looking so good for him right now so yeah, the dragoon number is slowly decreasing here we've got hardly any zealots to force the issue right now few more are popping out but more and more hydras are making their way over here to this high ground ridge and then just pelting the dragoons down he's targeting very nicely onto those dragons he could even take more i think right now but he's a little bit afraid of the maelstrom and a storm follow-up however that's just not in the cards right now for best he really doesn't have any energy on these units he's kind of bluffing by even being out in the front right now um that he has something but he okay he does have the maelstrom but he doesn't have the storm follow-up he will be able to kill most of the Hydras just with pure Zealot Dragoon, but still, he has no storms truly right now, and action with just mass Hydra can probably overwhelm this force. Yeah, I mean, he's only just now opened up a lane of attack and to his third expansion as well. Now the probe can come over to 9 o'clock, take this expansion at long last, but action already set up with four bases saturated and also beginning to add additional macro hatcheries at that fourth location. So I imagine he's going to be going up to at least like eight gate, sorry, eight hatcheries worth of production to keep up with the Protoss player. And he's already got three gases mining, so that's 900 gas a minute right now. There's a lot of lurkers that he can produce to fight this with pure battle zerg. He doesn't even have to go into hive right now if he doesn't want to. He can just keep challenging best and fight for this third base location yeah you'd love to stop this third base from ever going up and that would be a win condition here for action but you're still okay if best is slowed down enough taking this base and you're able to get up an, uh, uh, another base uh, behind this he's already got four you do need that uh, third gas or the fourth gas excuse me 
uh, before you can really go into Hive effectively. He's going to come in and actually focus down the Nexus right here with quite a lot of Hydras. He's throwing away a big chunk of army supply, but he is going to get the Nexus here. Yeah, this is a big deal, and even a catch of if, if, yeah, the probes as well, potentially, to slow down the, ne the Nexus even further from being thrown up here for uh, best. And that's going to be a nightmare situation, because he's only got, like, maybe three or four minutes until he starts to become mined out. So he's on the clock right now. If he doesn't get this moving soon, he's in big trouble. It's like a run by over to the center right. This could start to bring things back from best. He's uh, going to force all the drones here to run away. That's going to be a big hiccup in mining. That's going to force some hydras to come down. And it might open up an opportunity for Best to get out here and actually secure this third. Although, a lot more hydras making their way forward. Oh god, lurkers in very high number here at the front. They're super stacked up. No storms, though, to deal with them. Damn, action just smothering Best. And he is about to fizzle out. Yeah, we do have some army out on the map for Bess at the southern threshold right now. So he could, in theory, isolate and pincer maneuver this Zerg from both sides. The problem is he doesn't have a lot of units at his rally point, so he has no ability to actually set up a maneuver here. He's just got these units just sitting out in the open waiting for a play to actually make something happen. But he's unable to do so. He doesn't have enough forces in his rally point to come and out and just pincer these Zerg. What's he going to go for it now, right as the Zerg is rallying in more units? So he might just barely have enough to fight action here, but I don't think so I think the rally force is clear. It's a huge maelstrom, though. Look at that huge Ooh. maelstrom. On about 12 Eistras is getting melted by the Sionic Storm with a high tempo as well. Here come the Zerg reinforcements from the ridge line. Going to be able to isolate that Dark Archon and pick that off. But now, again, best with these forces out on the map. Uh, isolated from being able to rejoin with their brethren to the north and not able to kind of get the critical mass needed to keep fighting action here. I was a little bit skeptical that best could actually get uh, his Templar in range there to combo with the maelstrom but he did manage to get it i don't think it's going to be enough though actually with so many hydras here he's getting pincered a little bit but this is just pure dragoon fighting against probe or fighting against hydra and uh, lurker here the probe goes down not able to make that third base still here at 16 minutes that timer that you were talking about earlier has run out best ggs he taps out in the first game of the night goes to Zerg. Wow, I mean, action's so good at being fluid and moving north and south with those Hydra forces as well, preventing any kind of pincer maneuver from trading well. I'm really impressed by action already. Let's get into the next game. I'm really excited for this week. Okay, action. Game number two. The king of mind games in that first one, man. Really throwing yeah. best for a loop there. Uh, just in your, so in your face with the Hydra bust that it was it was almost too much like it was it was so in the face that best wasn't expecting it to actually happen and then it seemed like it wasn't going to happen but it actually was but then it wasn't a really great right, mind game right. from action the only mind game that didn't work that game was the fake drop into the main base where he sent four right. overlords into the main that was the only bluff that best actually called him on and didn't fall for it and everything else he just got hook line and sinkered into mm -hmm. yeah the the mutilisk tech totally threw him off the the block in the natural absolute genius there from action in this game he's gonna go for an early pool look at that nine pool here from action what do you think this yeah, is I mean, all about i mean royal does like to eight racks fairly often i think this is a fairly popular eight racks map i think so oh he, he's got he, okay for a second there for a second there i thought he wasn't going to cancel that gas and i thought we were going to see some crazy one hatch lurker play but uh, Royal is, um, wait, Royal is, no way, is he 14cc? No, 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 no. Okay, well, this game is probably over. Wow. All right. It's surprising to see a 14cc here because the eight racks is so popular right now. Earlier pools are, are more common. And with the earlier pools, um, just being so powerful against the a CC first like you, you just don't you don't want to be doing this right now and Royal's probably just gonna die here guys there's there's no two ways about it I mean action probably didn't have any emotional reaction to seeing the CC first but inside he's doing backflips you know what I mean like even though like he shows no exterior emotion he's like a, a soulless robot of just like absolute destruction he's an exterminator right 
But inside, I assure you, like you're doing backflips when you've opened up nine pool when you scouted him first and you you see 14 CC. You'll it's it's almost a guaranteed win. It just comes down to like not messing up the micro now. Yeah, we might see a roll tap out as soon as he sees the links, man. It's such a bad situation. He's doing that uh, meme, the the uh, the lottery meme. He's just the head thrown back, screaming in his mind when he sees that CC, and he's gonna get all the all the SEVs that are building buildings right now. He's just not gonna let any of this finish. And Royal's gonna have to tap out. He the only thing that can save Royal right now is a great surround with the SEVs, but I don't think that actually is gonna let that happen. All he needs to do is pull back whenever the SEVs try to engage or take an engagement like this where everything's in a line and the SEVs will just lose every single time. Yeah, the only way that you can lose this is if the first six lings kind of get surrounded and killed off by the SCVs and you get a little bit lucky with the SCV bounces and the racks can somehow finish. It is possible to hold those situations with 14cc. It's just so unlikely. It really does come down to a little bit of luck and getting like a really good surround on those initial links. And without it, it's just not much hope of hanging on. Snow going to come out next here. Spawning in the top right hand corner. Action in the bottom right. And Snow, dude, this guy has been seriously on fire lately. Mm. I mean, we will not give any ASL spoilers here, and uh, we're not going to talk about any of the, the, K the KCM games too much, just in case, but I'll probably just talk about the KCM games at least. But yeah, in general, he's been playing just in a different kind of form as of late and it does seem like some of his past problems have been a little bit more resolved like he's a a much more fierce competitor in pvz he's not really like got the same issues that bisu once had where say he was like falling short a little bit in pvt uh, snow kind of was pretty always good at like pvp and pvt but not necessarily the best in pvz but right recently he's been kind of stellar in all three matchups i have to say yeah, there was a time when he would really, really struggle against Zerg players, especially in long series, but he's filled up a lot of different holes in his game, and his control is unlike any other. I, th I think he's just pretty much perfectly suited to the style of uh, PVZ that's come into fashion recently, which is you know, getting lots of bases on the map, being really aggressive with your expanding and uh, just the, the sort of trading, um, and then getting into Reavers in the late game and you know, really battling it out with those Reavers and shuttles, you know, keeping that control going and, and using them to trade really, really well with the Lurkers and Hydras in the late game. Mm. I really do like action style here of just being as annoying as possible with his drone and getting as much DPS onto that probe, reducing its hit points. And now not only has it not got any shields, but it's also in yellow HP. And look at him coming off of another drone off the line just to throw some more shots off onto that probe, keeping it as low as possible so we can kill it all that more easier when the links start to come out. And then he can start to obfuscate what choices he'll be making. And putting snow in the dark here is going to make it much more uncomfortable. A Protoss player really has an issue with scouting until the Corsairs are out, so if this probe scout does die, it does really uh, complicate the situation for them. Forcing it into kind of a double-edged sword here, the early probe harass, making the natural a little bit later, but also, you know, losing that health on the probe makes it a little harder to scout, so, you know, forcing the Protoss to give up something in order to get something there, which is not usually what happens in these early trades with Protoss. They usually can just delay a bunch of hatcheries, you know, maybe throw down a pylon, really slow everything down, force you to build your hatcheries in an awkward position, and not really take any damage for it, except for, you know, losing that mining mining time in the early game by having the probe out yeah i'm curious if he's gonna go for uh fast hydro den here or if he's gonna just you know try and give that impression that he will do something like that by keeping this uh, probe from coming back in here he's just staying on the high ground here it's a little bit curious but i mean he can't really get into the main right now it's uh action blocking um that is kind of a difficult block to do there's a lot of space on that ramp even with the two eggs there so sometimes the probe can even slip by but it looks like he's got it pretty much pixel perfect now so that no probe can slip by that that little wall he's got on the ramp 
Yeah, he definitely has got that blocked off. Uh, one thing Snow could have done is like right click the probe out into the map and then shift click the minerals in the main base to drill through later on mm -hmm. after it comes uh, from its waypoint. But uh, he didn't elect to do that, so now he will not be able to confirm this layer tech. So as far as he's concerned, it could be a 973 like from last game and he has to be a little bit more concerned about some potential hydro timing, but he's got this probe just chilling at the third base location to see any incoming threats. We will see the fourlings out here on the field, but that's not anything too suspicious just yet. Still no speed here, but it's not quite that time. Um, four more lings moving around the left-hand side here might be able to catch this probe. He sees those lings as well. Um, Spire has begun, and there's the speed. So he sees that speed is at a pretty typical timing for a layer, but that's in, in today's day and age... That's not a guarantee that it's a, right. not a hydroless bust, right? You haven't seen the number of drones of the natural or the third. Um, and it is possible to go for like a 2 minute 30 gas, get the speed, and then go hydro speed and hydro range after that and still be okay. Well, especially with the cannon being pressed up against the wall like this, you don't need to rely on hydras for a hydro bust. You can just make four to six hydras of speed only and just move command up to the gateway to shoot the cannon while you link flood uh, to soak up the zealots and, you know, bold bulldoze in that way, just using bare minimal hydras to break the first cannon. Yeah, and you can see Snow's worried about that type of possibility. He's ignoring the Overlord and flying directly over here uh, in the path of Hydras uh, that Hydras would be taking to get down uh, to his natural. And he will see that it is indeed a Spire, and the Spire is just about done here. With that finishing, he's not going to be able to get any Overlords. He'll have to, I think, bring the two Corsairs here to the middle to try and get that one Overlord there. With the extra DPS of having two Corsairs, I think he can finish off of time without losing either of these Corsairs, but he will have to head home right after. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that this will really do anything to action. I mean, all he's basically going to accomplish with this is just forcing Lings instead of drones and maybe slowing down a few of the ideas of action here. He did just pick off an Overlord as well, which will supply block action and be a little bit frustrating for him to have to deal with this. He doesn't necessarily want to have to uh, stay home and defend this. He actually didn't elect to make any Lings, so he's just going to keep his Muir's back to defend this. That will buy a little bit of time here for Snow, and he may kill one or two drones for his efforts, but as long as he drone drills away, all he's going to really accomplish is some lost mining time, so maybe he accomplishes like 100 to 200 minerals worth of damage here, but not necessarily worth the cost of these zealots, so I'd say overall this is still very action-favored. Ooh, one drone almost goes down there. That was really close. Such good control by action up until that moment, but Snow almost managed to snipe that drone. Um, back to mining here. Action going to be droning like crazy with those overlords popping. He's got a decent economy coming forward with just a few mutas to force the extra Corsairs to be built. And to, to defend against these zealots, I think that you know, he's going to be able to squeeze out a lot of economy and go into a very serious six hatch hydro play. Yeah, well, he wants to just threaten the uh, Ogozerk here, so he's probably only going to make five meters for a very long time. It's possible he still will end up making a total of ten or so meters, so he can start one-shotting High Templars uh, during the mid-game phase. But for the time being, he just wants to threaten Snow with the Ogozerk um, possibility, so he's good. it keeps the, Pro the Protoss player stuck in his main base until he gets six Corsairs out with plus one due to needing to one-shot Scourge. So it prevents any kind of scouting. It also like gives a lot of uh, time for both players to set up. So it does kind of like force a mid-game scenario here. We do see a few more muters made by action to kind of go for this Ogozerk play here. Just enough Scourge and muters being made to get some damage onto this fleet of Corsairs to kind of keep the threat alive and keep him producing these Corsairs and keeping the gas invested into this anti-air we see here. Great micro here so far from Snow, but he does eat a couple of Ooh. Scourge at the end of that. Uh, still has a good number of Corsair here, but Hydras are starting to pop, so he has to stop the Corsair production soon and really identify what is actually coming. Oh, great movement here as well. He's going to get a ton of damage on all of these mutas, picking off a huge quantity of them. Zealots are now out on the map. They can start to scout out what's going on here. The Corsairs can take control of the skies, and Snow is going to start to move out with uh, some real conviction here, and I'm not sure that Action's ready for that. He wanted to buy more time with those mutas for sure. 
Well, now that the muters have been cleaned up a little bit, he doesn't have this like choice of like squeezing out a couple more muters to then go high templar sniping. So now he's pure hydra reliant, and that gives a lot more window for Snow to optimize and min max his trades coming up here in the mid game phase. And he's gonna have a very strong zealot uh, Sair army sharking around the map to be as annoying as possible, picking up a few of these overlords, seeing if he can at least supply block action or just drag the, the Zerg army around a little bit and buy as much time as possible to squeeze out a few more additional units. He only has two High Templars chilling to make sure he doesn't get uh, broken and killed, but now he's going to start producing a lot more of those units so he can come out onto the map in a big way soon and have like, you know, six to eight storms available to him for a big push later on after he's done this initial skirmishing damage. Two, three, uh, High just went down for free there and now the Zealots were making their way into the natural. They did get blocked up by a few rallies coming out. And action here, keeping his army in the center of the map. Gonna start to push forward. He doesn't have Overlord speed just yet, so he can't fight against DTs that popped out, but he kills the DT. He goes after the High Templar now in the natural. Breaking that natural is huge right now. We don't have Storm. He didn't have Storm in time. Yeah, he he must. He, uh, he, that wasn't. That must be a mistake as well because he has the minerals to do so. He must have just forgot to research it on time or something because he should have had storm there and just didn't. It's like ten minutes into the game and he has the resources. I don't know what's going on with Snow right now. He has a lot of resources not being spent as well, kind of falling apart a little bit here against Action. But he has supply blocks in Action, sixty supply and not able to make any additional units. And with the DTs here, able to keep the Hydras at bay and just buy as much time as possible. There's a lot of more units coming. There are Sairs just diving across the map right now to intercept any potential overlords from coming up here and finishing the game. He doesn't even have the, the speed on those overlords to come up here and break this. So there is a strong window here where Snow can start to stabilize, but for a moment there looked like the action was uh, in a game-winning position. Yeah, the DT snipe in the middle of the map was so big. Uh, action was just kind of holding position in the middle while dealing with the army of Snow in his natural uh, with only his rallies. And then Snow sending a bunch of DT, or DTs and Zealots just randomly across the map, maybe heading, sending them down towards the bottom left. Ended, ended up losing the DT there. And that DT wasn't ready. It wasn't uh, available for the defense. And so he had to wait for another round of DTs and Zealots to pop out of his uh, gateways in order to hold off that attack. And... It was very scary. Now it's going to be scary once again as the Overlord speed finishes. Action going to put this, the, the hurt back onto Snow once again. Just sending everything across the map. But has he overestimated himself here? Can he actually get in and kill? There's one Templar, three Storms. And oh god, Snow's going to turn around. He's going to go home. He realizes that he's not going to have enough to hold on. Yeah, he has to turn around. He, the base in the bottom left is completely exposed and easy to kill, but there's no way he can win a base trade scenario right now. There's just far too much Zerg to handle. So Snow is in just like full tactical retreat to try and intercept uh, as much of these units as possible. See if he can bleed off these Hydras on the left-hand side. He wasn't able to kill as many of the Overlords as he would like to with those Corsairs, but he is trying to buy as much time as possible for a few more cannons to warp in. And Action's just going to GG. Wait, why didn't Action try and fight there? I guess he just didn't have enough. Uh, I think he just realized that he just wouldn't have enough to to break him and to keep fighting but i'm a little bit surprised by the gg timing i thought he'd at least try and fight yeah i thought he would try and fight as well um it's a little bit confusing there you can definitely go into uh you know more of a conservative play from that position get into lurker get into uh, extra upgrades but it seemed like action had put a lot of his hopes into that bust play um and you know the way that he was positioning out on the map um, ended up working out very well for him the snipes and the templar were fantastic killing off the the cannons obviously really really good but the over or the the overlord control the the sweeping squad of corsairs doing their job picking off overlords as they're making their way to the natural and the the overlord speed was just way way too late imagine if there was overlord speed during that last attack he would have easily won that game um from that position that he found himself in but the overlord speed didn't finish until way way too late similar to the storm i guess so both players kind of missing the timing on their upgrades kind of a strange way to end that game number three but we're gonna jump straight on in to our next match will be it. finally some protoss versus terran well snow managed to win that last game but he was looking incredibly shaky there 
you know, we yeah. took a look back at the the replay, and you can see that he didn't. Uh, when that bus came in, the the hydralis bus, it was basically ten minutes into the game, and he didn't have storm. Um, also, action, you know, ha not having the overload speed at uh, ten eleven minutes, pretty strange, but. Um, yeah, both players looking shaky. Will Snow be able to pull himself together here? He's got another chance to try and make things right. And it's going to be a Pearls versus Terran, so strong likelihood for him to build some confidence, build some momentum to surge ahead in this week and give some more points to the Protoss race coming forward here. Uh, looks like we're going to have a cross-map position, so if Snow doesn't want to go for the 12th Nexus, though, it looks like, so it's a shame, because if he was going to go for the 12th Nexus, it'd probably be a pretty good one, considering, like, uh, We've got cross maps here, but it is Troy. So there is also a possibility here that we could have seen a two gate from Snow, but it looks like he's also not going to go for that. Man, I hope that uh, we don't see Snow clown on speed here. <laughs> I hope we don't see him like mass scouts or something like that after doing a bunch of damage. Um, I don't think so. I don't think we'll just see something like that necessarily. But we might see some crazy like micro shenanigans of like you know Reavers getting obscene amounts of damage and what have you. Troy is just such a weird map, and um, there's so many shenanigans that can be pulled. I think if Speed yeah, gets behind at all in this game, I think he might just tap out. The that might be where his mental's at here. Um, being this kind of the weakest player in this lineup and going up against the strongest player in PVT, it's uh, it's a bit of a mismatch right now. So uh, we'll see how his mental is here and whether he kind of crumbles under the pressure uh, if things start to go wrong because you know that they're gonna get messy. When you're playing in a game against snow well he did used to play under the idea uh, 10 minute flash right so it's kind of like suggesting that he's really confident in the early to mid game transition or he needs to be careful though. taking a lot of damage on this so just one more particle beam shot would have finished it off but luckily the marine able to not only bully that way but does smack the kill on that probe actually so a little bit of flash wannabe over here so far earning his stripes uh, does manage to pick off that probe and it makes a big difference here with the Zealot coming up, not having the probe to add that harassment uh, or add to that harassment is uh, a little bit unfortunate here for Snow. Two Marines now are out and a third is about to come. So once the third Marine is out, that's when you're really able to challenge that first Zealot. Four Marines kind of wreck a Zealot. A three Marines, you can challenge it. Two Marines, it's, it's really, really hard. So he's going to wait for that third one to come out. He'll be uh, focusing here on trying not to let the Protoss player take control of this high ground, of this uh, natural expansion. Because if he does get full control here, he will just kill one of those assimilators and things will get completely out of hand for speed. Yeah, speed's uh, felt a little bit ballsy there and tried to push out into the natural, but then identified the early two Zealots. And he was kind of hoping that there was a chance that it was Zealot into Dragoon, so he could come out here, maybe set up a bunker and be super safe. But Snow did make the fast two Zealots, so that means that the bunker will not be able to be made here by speed. So now it'll just be five Marines, one Vulture versus two Zealots, one Goon. So a little bit of a micro battle going on here. The Goon will try and trade as many shots onto this Vulture as possible, while the Zealots uh, try not to take too much damage so that he can. And then later on engage before the bunk goes up. But it seems like Speed is getting the better end of the stick for that skirmish and is going to be able to start setting up the CC and bunker at a reasonable timing. It was feeling a little dangerous there with only one SCV to fight. Things can get out of control very quick without the those extra body blockers in the way. But Speed did a good job of, you know, walking that fine line, dancing that dance and Snow recognizing it. The, uh, the dance moves there, recognizing the happy feet that Speed was showing off, does pull back. Gonna take the conservative route here and just keep all of these alive for that later drop. Two Zealots are very useful with that first Reaver. Ooh, I like this from Speed, just turning the Vulture around right away to avoid taking too much unnecessary damage on it. If you're not going to get it out on the map, don't even just try and risk it, because losing that Vulture right now would just be far too painful, especially before that mine upgrade becomes relevant. But it is super annoying that he can't get out here with this Vulture. He's going to try and create a little bit of space with this tank so this Vulture can squeeze out, but Snow being super active with these first two Dragoons before the, the reinforcements can show up. But once the four Dragoons 
goons get here, then there's no way this tank can uh, bully back these goons anymore. It's a little bit funny that he's not um, pulling the marines out of the bunker to fight with the, the tank there. A lot of Terran players will pull that type of move, pull the, pull the marines out, try to push back the dragoon, and then slip the vulture out. Looks like he will get it out, though, regardless. A sm small moment here, uh, lapsing in attention. Snow allows this vulture to get out on the map, but, oh, it stops for a moment, and that might just be enough. I think he's going to get this. It was 5 at 1 HP, but it's basically going to be dead anyway because it's now isolated in the top left. So that will be cleaned up by snow slowly but surely. That one dragoon going to be hunting that down. Maybe it can get lucky of a mind game here and sneak out, but I don't think snow will allow that to occur. Yeah, he's not going to let that happen. And speed, I guess he's just going to lay some mines and hide this up in the top corner, hoping that snow will run into that mine. It looks like he actually will. So maybe getting some damage here at least. No, he doesn't even get the damage from the mine. Oh, Too good, man. Too speed. good. Speed, my brother. What is going on in this game? Looks like gonna move out with the three tank push. This is a really standard tank push. Uh, good timing here, but Snow is going to have the Reaver in time to deal with something like this. I think Speed will move across the map, try to lay down mines as close to Snow's base as possible, and then back away. Oh, he's gonna get the mines on the other side of the Dragoons here. This is kind of yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Can he yeah, actually yeah, yeah. force them to walk into the mines? I don't think so, but oh, he gets a great mine there. That's huge. Yeah, even the fact that he gets he kills the other mine is still slowing down this army. He does pull the probes off, so that's a bit of lost mining time as well, even though nothing died there. So has still dished out a little bit of damage to Snow, despite not killing a lot here. And now has a little bit of a position to work with, so that Snow has to take a little bit of time clearing up these mines before getting... Well, he needs to be careful, though. a little bit of body blocking on this army. Snow actually will catch up to these tanks and start to get some free hits on them if he's not careful. And that's exactly what I think might happen, because he just hasn't been focusing on his army control enough and without magic box uh, move commands the, the units kind of like glitch out a little bit and don't move in formation so now a few tanks are going to uh, potentially go down here mm, one tank does fall and back at home snow sets up a wall not going to allow those vultures to sneak in there and deal any damage and nexus meanwhile going up in the top left hand corner snow starting to take control of this game i think the move out was really nice from speed i think the you know vulture run by was pretty darn decent but the retreat was not well executed there. Speed allowed those units to body block each other. And the tank getting picked off there is almost inexcusable. Now coming up to the front. Not going to be able to get anything aside from one probe and may lose all the vultures. Just two will escape with very low HP. They might be able to lay down some mines and stuff, but they're not going to be able to deny a base. Coming up here from Snow Snow, having that in the top left already. Really good position here for him now. Yeah, Speed's going straight into Five Factory, which is probably his best choice now, considering that Snow likes to go for this Reaver so much that he might give up. Coming in the natural expansion with those Vultures, but they were already on such low HP that with the Particle Beams helping out from the probes, going to be clearing up those very efficiently, not really taking any damage there besides a little bit of lost mining time. Uh, so yeah, right now things looking super good for Snow, but the supplies do kind of indicate that Speed's been macroing decently behind this. Uh, you know, he's been, he's been hitting his stride despite like having a bit of an uh, awkward early game so maybe he will still have a timing here with this oh he's going up to six factories he might still have a timing here with this plus one finishing up and six factories of production maybe he can do something to snow here we'll have to squeeze out four goliaths to help deal with that shuttle being able to two shot them with the volley from the four goliaths will help him out a lot when snow does start to use his reaver micro to slow down the push well we've just crossed the nine minute mark guys we're about out of time here for 10 minute flash to make a victory happen against snow can he get this push to work it's such a difficult long track across the map uh from cross map position it's just so tough to cut off all of the reinforcements to cut off uh you know the army coming from multiple angles and uh, you know getting around behind the forces of speed stopping him from reinforcing it, it's it's really really rough here for speed uh to make this push happen but he's got to do it he's got to go here pretty darn soon because yeah we are gonna have that reaver coming across the map and snow is starting to get gateways in the top left as well you want to shut him down before he gets that extra rally point up and established 
Yeah, I mean, this is looking pretty bad for speed, but maybe he can make something work with this push. I just think that maybe the psychological game is going to affect him too much. And he's a little bit concerned about um, who he's up against right now. He knows just how good Snow is. He's played against him online so many times, and he's been destroyed by him so many times already. Then maybe that's just messing with his head a little bit here and making him just be overly cautious and not really having any kind of initiative to really seize and pre prevent Snow from getting too far ahead for free. Sometimes your reputation as a player is uh, actually a weapon as well right snow has that right. such a reputation at this point uh, of being so deadly with reaver and being so strong at um pvt that it's got to affect these darren players going into games against him and uh, when you don't think that you can win when you feel like you're behind you end up making decisions that are not uh not relevant to your position that are not good for the position that you're actually in in the game you're you end up uh you know thinking of yourself from a different uh different spot but he might be able to get the shuttle that's a big kill one shuttle for that uh one single goliath not bad at all that's gonna give speed some options here maybe he can shove out and force the fight kill off the reaver and actually take uh, a decent attack here make a decent attack uh, start against snow now slowly edging forward i don't really like this as much i think he needs to unseize and go before another shuttle makes its way up here yeah i think he's just really worried about not having full intel he doesn't know exactly what snow's production is like right now he knows that there's a chance that he's got a lot of speed shuttles waiting and more uh, zealot bombs and uh, more reavers uh, waiting in the wings even though he doesn't right now so he even went up to like six goliaths before one got picked off so he's got a few extra goliaths so this very tank goliath heavy composition is super effective at dealing with like shuttle play so he is anticipating quite a few sh speed shuttles being utilized by snow and he's got a few extra goliaths just to help give him a little bit of bolster in dealing with those shuttles to really shut down this kind of slow um reaver play that snow can incorporate to uh, prevent speed from coming out onto the map too quickly here there's a lot of puns in what i just said man there is yeah there's these problems that Terran players have, right? There's there's the problem of moving forward too quickly and getting caught with your pants down. Like, as you're shoving in, the Protoss can just totally wipe out your attack. But there's uh, the other problem, which is moving forward too slowly, which can be equally as deadly, giving the Protoss player too much time uh, to pick away at your army. Moving forward very, very cautiously can end up, you know, ruining an attack like this as well. Yeah, I mean, so far, Speed's done a pretty good job, though, of, like, scanning for these observers and, like, preventing Snow. Now also sniping this Reaver. That's a pretty big deal. Snow does have a pretty sizable standing army, but if if if, scan, if Speed is really, like, tentative with how he moves forward and constantly scans for the, the, where the Protoss army is positioned and doesn't really get caught with his pants down by, like, sieging and unseaging all his tanks at once and what have you, and, like, kills his own minds when he moves forward and, like, dots his eyes, crosses his T's, then maybe he can actually deal with Snow here but I feel like he's taking way too long in going about it though Snow's mining on four bases right now and it's gonna start running away with this game if speed doesn't somehow like live up to his name and like you know get with it right now and put the, put the pedal down nice little flare here from speed adding some supply depots along this train as well to just <clears throat> eat up some extra dragoon shots when the eventual attack comes in but yeah this is this is that second problem that uh, Terran players face is not moving too quickly, but moving too slowly. Slowly creeping across the map here is giving Snow so much time. He's got 177 supply, and that's going to blossom and bloom up to 200 very, very soon. Nice drops here on top of some of these tanks, picking off a couple of them before the engagement happens. But looks like you will lose this Reaver here at the front. Just one more shot from that tank should pick that off. Barely manages to slug it out getting away from that tank and here comes the attack finally snow i think he's decided to pull the trigger storms coming down that last addition to this army is going to be very very effective dropping them on top of these tanks but the tanks are still alive here if he gets some scvs over to repair those it'll be like that never happened starting to push forward even more here but look at this this is this is starting to get sandbagged speed is not going to be able to push through anymore i don't think well speed actually has the tools required to not only fight snow but beat him it's just he's taking so long to do it and it gives snow more and more time to keep just refilling his zealots and going again and we're just going to see more and more reaver scabs 
connecting with these tanks as the Goliaths desperately try and shoot down the shuttles with the help by missiles. Not able to do so. Shuttle's still alive and Reaver's still alive. So still with the slowdown effect being um, ushered in here from Snow and preventing this movement forward. And it looks like Winter winter isn't uh, only coming, but it's arrived and, and Snow is just going to be uh, like landing some killing blows on a, the Khaleesi of speed right now. Speed is getting super close to the natural, but every time he inches forward, Snow is punishing. Every time he tries to get a little bit of ground here, gain a tiny bit of ground, Snow is extending this lead by just picking off a few units and macroing twice as many uh, out back at home to replace the ones that he's losing. Dropping another storm here on some tanks. Speed is getting very, very close now, but look at how spread out his tank line is. Only about two, three tanks are ever going to be attacking in these fights. Yeah, I mean, to be honest though, pretty sloppy fights from both sides. We see High Tempers dying to mines, and yeah, a DT does come out though. Scan very quick with it, with the scan, preventing any kind of like shenanigans and uh, further damage from that DT. A lot of tanks are sieged up right now, and there is just barely enough vultures to soak up these zealots. So maybe there was a tiny hope here for spe uh, speed to start breaking through and get getting on top of the production and shutting down this uh, rally point and natural expansion of snow. But it looks like he's just taking so long to get across the map and do it it's like trench warfare i feel like i'm watching like world war one here or something like i'm not too i'm not too fond of these kind of reenactments mm, this is yeah definitely world war one ask every single inch you know hundreds of dead bodies for every small patch of ground here that speed is fighting for he's throwing in his army uh to try and slow down the enemy advance snow is in fact slowing him down over and over and over again and now up to a 40 supply advantage is it going to be enough to actually break this bush or is he going to have to delay for even longer oh dropping the reaver he does lose it but he gets a pretty decent uh reaver sc scarab there now speed is right in front of the natural and what can snow do to stop this he's got the gateways in the top left so he has another uh, rally point to work with he's dropping the zealots on top of the tanks a lot of them are going to go down a great storm to start this fight, only five tanks left, man. Can he finally break this? I mean, finally, we're at the gates of Troy and we're we're doing some damage here. Is there is Hector gonna answer the call and like come out and fight Achilles and will Achilles uh, like you know, rewrite history and uh, keep his heel intact this time? We're gonna find out in this game. Maybe we're gonna see a little bit of a reenactment and rewritten of history here. Would like to see it. Well, speed. He's gonna have to deal with this counter attack that's coming across the map right now. Snow doing the right thing, going around the army. A lot of the position in the middle has been abandoned. There's just a few mines, uh, some supply depots and turrets in the middle. And right at the natural, there's almost nothing. So if you can just come in here, kill the turrets, kill some of these tanks, stop the reinforcements, then Speed's army on the map will fizzle out. There's just not enough stuff here to deal with all this. Oh, he's running into mines. That's not good. Snow actually running into mines here, making things uh, kind of rough right now. SAV's coming out to fight. Uh, tanks here are going to get picked off. He's being a little bit aggressive with his army actually coming forward. Losing those two tanks is pretty bad, and actually Speed's going to have to turn around. He's abandoning the push. Yeah, this is really rough for Speed to have to deal with. Having to abandon the push like this and come back to clean us up, even though he's going to kill all these Dragoons. Snow has bought so much time for himself, and now has his fifth base up online, operational, counteracting this third that Speed has been able to set up, and is ahead by about 55 supply as well. There is pretty strong upgrade timings here for speed i think he's about to come online with plus three weapons so it looks pretty good for him right now i think that snow was thinking speed was going to take the base in the center right so he's been killing those assimilators over there uh however speed's not interested in that he's actually taking the bottom right he's trying to push over into the center left but the assimilator's been killed that's an island that can't be attacked now um speed actually going to move over here to the top left Mm, I don't know if this oh, is the right place. In here, what? Sorry? He didn't even research plus two. He didn't even make the science facility. He's basically oh. been all in this entire time, banking on doing something with this push. He He's really in a bad way right now. He needs to do critical damage to the infrastructure of snow, or he's going to fall rapidly behind. He's actually more behind than we thought he was right now. He's still in 1-1 one, one grades. Well, there was the move forward that, uh, you know, the first mistake of Terran here. 
moving forward too quickly. He eats huge, huge Reaver shots, and a bunch of tanks go down. And at the same time, Snow going to circumvent this army, uh, circumvent the middle of the map, in fact, and just go over here to the bottom right to shut down this base. Yeah. That's too bad. Speed, I mean, he had that hidden base. That was a pretty good idea. Uh, Snow didn't know about that until just moments ago, and he's already shutting it down. Trying to move in here onto these gateways, and Snow getting so much value out of this Reaver, just crushing all of these units, and even this base in the bottom left, or bottom right, is going to be found for speed, and Snow's going to shut that down very, very handily. More and more units making their way up to the top left, but yeah, this... Terrible upgrade situation here for speed. And the lack of mining now with the natural like completely mined out. Speed just doesn't have any income coming in at this point. How can he possibly win a game like this? I don't know right now. Snow is just ripping the pistons out of his engine and he's unable to operate at full capacity. The horsepower is probably at an all-time low. He's doing 0 to 60 in about 19 seconds at the moment and not the kind of speed you want when you're dealing with like, you know, space warfare. Uh, granted, you might still be able to like outrun the, the, the Reavers on foot, but I'm not sure that's going to really amount to much. Looks like the bus was too slow for speed. He dropped below the critical speed required to keep the bomb from exploding a fiery mess here Keanu Reeves is dead boys speed is gone and this movie is over we're gonna move on to the next game here snow versus either hero sulky it's coming up right up well speed slow played that last game and forced a ton of puns out of both of us some good references were had there as well but we've got now snow versus hero this next game this is this is a great game to get excited about oh yeah hero is a phenomenal zerg player well deserving of an asl title eventually i hope this is going to be his year i'm rooting for him um i really do wish that he does well it's crazy how good this guy is considering I don't know how to put it. Like he's just so well-rounded. Like there's nothing he he can't do. Like he can he's super good with his execution and like micro that he can do all kinds of like cheesy shenanigans. But also is super potent in those like like just power droning and like solid macro plays as well. It's just he's he's probably the most complete Zerg that we've got. I I would go as far as to say. It must be frustrating to be that good and to be that well-rounded and then try to like think about the, well what can I do to improve you know what I mean like how do I make it to that ASL title I guess it's right. mind games right you have to you have to get really really good at the mind games I think that's like yeah. the, maybe the essential piece that may be missing from a, a tournament player uh, like Hero yeah I mean it's fr it must be frustrating because he's got so many round of four finishes and he, he's almost always around in the round of eight like he's just this guy that's always around always placing high but just never quite making it and it's kind of like like stork at the time of old you know that king of silver thing going on where it must be frustrating for a player to not quite be making the grade despite being one of the best in the world yeah something similar to like a best for sure um there's a, there's a few names that i can think of that players that are just so close to that title and oh Whoa, we weren't even talking Whoa. about it because we never expected it to happen, but Snow just killed one of the first drones here from Hero. Crazy, absolutely. And what's even more crazy is that this is a gateway first. So <laughs> the fact that he, he went over pool into expansion is like the most safe way of playing. Usually you're doing this because if you go hatchery first, if you lose a drone, it's kind of like negating the advantage of going for the earlier hatchery anyway. And instead we see him going for the safe option and losing a drone to the scouting probe and now getting the third hatchery uh, slowed down and denied as well. This is a great little early edge for Snow and Hero's in a lot of trouble already. Yeah, I was about to start talking about how, you know, Hero done a good job of dealing damage to the early probe like, uh, you know, Action did in that uh, previous game against uh, Bisu, or against the Snow, excuse me, but uh, then the, the drone falls. It's not something you ever expect to see, and Snow is in a great spot here, trying to sneak by with these two links. He's produced, like, the bare minimum number of defensive units here to try and make up for the fact that he lost that early drone, but now he actually has to start making links so that he can deal with this zealot. 
Well, he used those uh, first two links aggressively to keep those zealots back, so there was no chance that these zealots can do any kind of additional pressure and, like, uh, you know, basically make an issue of these slightly later links. So it is a small little victory here for Hero to try and stabilize, squeeze out a little bit of uh, extra drones to replenish, but he's still not looking healthy right now. He hasn't got a single drone mining in this natural expansion just yet either. Uh, he will still be able to have a, some skin in this game. It's not like he's out by any means, but I would say his win percentage, while it should have been closer to 50%, is now looking more like, you know, 30, 40%, and it's not really ideal this early in the game to have that kind of edge being given to your opponent. Guys, this this what Hero did will only work against a, a really strong Protoss player, right? If it was a weaker Protoss player, like a, a, a dumb ladder player... Oh, oh, is he getting this probe? Okay, hold on. Hold that thought, hold that thought. He almost gets that probe there. Um, he's gonna run back. Um, if you just send those two first lings across the map and, and run around the Zealot and try to get into the natural and, you know, tr try to pretend that you're gonna run by, um, a weaker Protoss player will just send their Zealot across the map, and since you're not making lings, you'll probably end up losing something. But, uh, because it's Snow and he's a very strong player, he sends the Zealot back to make sure that those two lings don't get in. Um, expecting that there's more links on the way that will deal with the Zealot if it went across the map. And in this way, Hero has managed to get himself a little bit back into this game. Just slightly, he's managed to kind of even the odds here. Yeah, ever so slightly. I would say it's like, you know, coming up to like 45%. You know, it's slightly getting back to that kind of like where we want to be. It's not quite all the way there. He needs to not lose this drone. Okay, thank the Lord he didn't lose that drone. I'm sure Hero is going to end up being a Christian after this because God's looking out for him because he's still just barely hanging on by the thread in this game. He's also like slowing down his gas mining a little bit. He's going to be throwing down the fourth hatchery as early as possible, trying to optimize by mining a, as little gas as possible. Just going to be getting that link speed on the way to defend against any initial cell pressure while also applying his own pressure to the natural expansion maybe force out an additional cannon potentially. But I don't think that's going to be occurring. There's enough sellouts with this one cannon to be pretty safe. So uh, he will be safe to anything that snow will throw at him for quite some time time but he's gonna have a little bit of a hard time of his it now just macroing up and powering into this uh, strong mid game that he needs he's just barely where he wants to be but maybe slightly behind the curve right now yeah that's an interesting adaptation here from hero to go for uh, that very fast hydralis den with the uh, extra hatcheries um, by cat by canceling the gas by stopping mining on that gas he won't be able to get the lair out uh, in a timing that will allow him to stop uh, overlords from going down around the map. But as long as he pulls everything back here... Oh, double Stargate! Oh, this is super good for Hero. Hero yeah. is playing the perfect build to counter this. So, actually, Snow misreading the situation here completely. Well, it, it depends. So it depends how good um, Snow is at hunting down these initial overlords. If he starts to run away with the game by getting some chain kills on these overlords, then it becomes an issue. Whereas if we do protect the overlords with our Hydro timing, this is a potential uh, to waste a lot of resources of Snow going into this strong Corsair fleet that doesn't really amount to much. If he can hunt down the overlords, there's a window where Snow can really exploit Hero's lack of mobility because there is no lair timing. But if he, I, I would say that if Hero can somehow keep his overlords alive right now he's in a very good spot because a lot of gas is going to be going into these corsairs and there's not going to be much gas going into um templar archives and i templars already snow only electing to produce out of any one of these stargates now already look so hero not going to be able to kill right away here because we are going to throw down the citadel we're going to get into that uh dt tech very quickly so the corsairs will prevent any overlords from going, coming across the map and because we don't have lair um we're not going to have overlord speed and so the dts are a defense that will not be broken we're not going to be able to get in there and kill um but if hero just defends the overlords like you're talking about keeps them alive and prevents dts from getting in uh, and, you know, masses up Hydra, gets into a really good solid drone saturation, then he should be in a really good spot here because the Templar is going to be very, very late. And the uh, the storm is going to be late as well. A lot of money has been invested into these Corsairs. So, uh, really, the, the stars are aligning here, but it all comes down to control at the end of the day, like most things in StarCraft. Yeah, I think Snow was trying to metagame Hero and assumed that he'd be dumping... Uh into a fast lair and maybe going for an Ogre Zerg play to compensate for the awkward position and completely misread the situation and 
now actually kind of put himself into a little bit of an awkward spot because with such late tech like this, it's it's going to give a window for Hero to come back into the game. He's already looking very healthy on the supplies and it will not be a strong enough Protoss. Look how many cannons he's forced to throw down just to not die because he realizes that Storm's not going to be finished until at least like nine minutes, maybe like nine minutes, 20. And by then there's a lot of Hydras that could be barreling down on his gate. He doesn't need Storm. He needs one DT. That's it. So, I mean, just one DT here holds everything. Um, the Templar Archives should have been done a little bit a little bit ago, so we should have a DT any second. Um, I still don't see one, and he's starting to break through these cannons. Where on earth is this DT? Cannons are going down. Some of them are going to finish up here. The Zealots come from behind. The uh, Zealot speed is done. Man, um, this is weird. I don't see this DT. Is this a big mistake from Snow, or is this just me? Yeah. No, no, it's a big mistake, but he spent so much gas already that he probably just didn't think to even start a DT when the Templar Archives popped. He only probably thought about it as an afterthought. Just a little bit of an oversight that he didn't, like, preemptively make that DT as soon as the Templar Archives finished. So now it would have been too late for that DT to squeeze out. So, and, and one DT would be slightly too slow DPS to prevent him from losing too much anyway. So he probably just didn't even bother making any DT after the fact as well. Dude, DT just wrecks this. It's so silly. Yeah, I can't believe we're making these many, this many Templar. We're yeah. not making DT right now. Um, it's it's caster's curse, guys. This is this is not supposed to happen. Hero Lair is so late. There's no way he has overload speed, and the entire map's been swept. Two DTs just crushes everything. Even one DT at the beginning of that fight would just stand in the way and kill so many Hydras that he would have easily been able to hold. Now he's got Templar with no Storm, no energy. Um, I think they just now have energy, but GG is called. This is a massive error from Snow. How? How the heck did he mess that up? No more all kill here. I mean, Snow was on the path. He was the last one who could potentially have all killed after taking out right. action. If he'd managed to kill off Hero and Soul Key, he would have gotten that 2 million one prize. But I guess it's just going to continue to grow here because that option is now off the table. Hero's just so good, man. It's like crazy to me. And uh, Snow making these kinds of blunders makes me like kind of rethink my previous assessment of him that he'd kind of plugged his holes and what have you. Like, still seems to be very shaky in this PBZ uh, um, matchup. And yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed in Snow, I have to say. Like, very, very uh, lackluster performance from him. Uh, no, I, I, I can excuse them being mind game like that and going double Stargate almost, mm. but without not having any like follow-up play to like be able to deal with a hydra bus like that i feel like it's just a really elementary um pros error to make like this is something that like a rank pros players need to figure out very quickly yeah it, in that sort of situation you see the lateness of the the layer and the the t zerg player trying to get back into the game by just making pure hydra um, the, D the DT play is, is such a simple decision to make, um, really quite strange, just, it, it feels like a mental block or something happened in that game where he just was not even thinking about the fact that he had the option of invisible men there, you have invisible guys that can two-shot well, Hydras. Invisible. They weren't even in the game. <laughs> <laughs> they were, yeah, they were in a blind spot in the, the mind of Snow. Unfortunate result there, but Snow is out, and Hero will go up against Sharp. That's a great match. Cannot wait for that. Let's jump right in. Well, it's super hard not to do any sort of spoiler for ASL, but we're doing our absolute best here, guys. I am so, so excited for this match right here, Hero versus Sharp. Sharp down here in the bottom left-hand corner, Hero in the top left. How will this turn out and how will it affect the future performance of these two players? I mean, I, I think I speak for both of us when I say these are both players that we individually support and would like to see do well, uh, for sure, right? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Definitely two of the favorites. Um, in the scene right now sharp has been performing absolutely out of his mind a lot of you probably know already that i've got this guy as my favorite to win this season of asl <laughs> it's a long shot but i think that um he's got a real chance right now i, th I think it'd be a good bet you know if you it, it, the odds that people would lay on him to win the asl i think would be a good bet i think that people underestimate him a little bit you know what i'm saying so i think if you were a gambling man he'd be a he'd be a good guy to throw some money on 
Yeah, somebody offered me in a YouTube comment, uh, 10 to 1 odds. Um, that, That's not uh, bad. I mean, I, 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 I would rate him as a round of 8 player and mm -hmm. with his performance recently, so I would argue that those aren't necessarily bad odds to take. Well, they gave me that, that option, I think it was during like the round of 16 or something like that, you know? So, um, it was a considerably worse bet at that time. Now that we've we've progressed um, in the tournament, it's it's a it's a better bet. But like, um, still ten to one odds. Uh, people really underestimate this guy, man. They really do, and I think it's 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 uh, it's good to be underestimated. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. And that's the other thing is that a lot of people are going to be keeping their eyes on players like Snow and Light and you know, these other like you know kind of usual suspects in the scene. And the players like Sharp will slip a little bit more under the radar and catch people by surprise more and uh, make them even a little bit more deadlier in their like their royal road to stardom. Mm. A, a lot of players actually suffer when they are considered the the favorite to win as well, right? They, they have a hard time dealing with that mentally, whereas being the underdog is actually a favorable position in, at times. People would rather be the underdog, uh, you know, fighting up against the the stronger player. Um, mentally, it can be an edge. Like, some people are completely the opposite. They would rather, you know, they, they have, find it hard to be the underdog, but... Uh, I, I know some players like, um, for example, I've heard Ozzy, Ozzy the Hockey talk about this, like he likes to be the underdog, he, he doesn't want people to be, you know, thinking that he's going to win uh, in any situation, he wants to be, uh, you know, considered the the weaker player so that he can upset everything. Yeah, yeah. Ozzy the Hockey, the uh, Protoss uh, YouTuber, streamer, player. Pretty good guy. Now, in this game here, we kind of skipped over the early game. Nothing crazy has happened. It's uh, two racks, Academy Rush here for Sharp. Sharp is uh, going to have some pressure in the early game and quite a good count of Marines. And Hero got in there and he saw quite a bit of information, you know. I don't think he saw the second racks, but he was able to get into the main base, take a look around. And he's picked off this SCV very early on as well. So denying some information here. He built six slings and Sharp smartly not going to move across the map, I think, with these three Marines. If he moved out with these Marines, that would be absolutely suicidal. Yeah, he's been having these Marines just chilling outside the natural expansion, threatening a potential counterattack this entire time. Hero now also, like, fanning out his Zergling just to check for any kind of, like, sneaky maneuverings from Sharp here, both in catching these SCVs that are trying to get out on the map to scout, but also to make sure there's no, like, you know, naked Marines trying to sneak into the natural expansion for a few drone kills as well, like, players have been very adept in coming up these creative ways at punishing zerg timings lately oh boy he's got to get behind this wall man oh no 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 we gotta get behind this wall get behind there oh boy that was scary that was very scary um the the life flashing before the eyes of the marines here um now that the medic is out it's not quite as scary we should have stim very shortly as well so he can take fights here, but this uh, this little Ling Force is going to prevent a, uh, pr present a serious threat here. He's actually moving straight across the map, and he's not going to fight this. He's actually going to send out Fire Bats to deal with that. Stimming, bat, stimming, sending the Fire Bat forward. He will push back the, the Lings here, but... Oh, man. Can Sharp actually make this play work? It's two medics, about six Marines here. Sunken Colony's not done. More Lings are going to pop out, though. Can he actually hold? I think he will with the Lings coming up from behind and the Lings popping at the front. He will be able to save this, but Hero going to have to delay his Mutalus tech by quite a lot here. He just used all of his Larva to try and hold off that attack. Yeah, if, if Sharp can get back to his base with this bio ball without taking any damage to it, that's great for him. But so far, the links have been sharking around, like kind of suggesting that maybe they would be considering a little pincer here to come in and kill a few of the Marines. But it looks like because the, the Marines are moving in quite a tight enough formation, there's no straggling Marines to isolate. And yeah, as a result, going to be slowing down this Mew timing. Only three Mews have been produced so far. There's a lot of gas banked up, which is kind of suggesting that Hero is going to be droning a little bit to compensate and isn't going to be going for this uh, strong Mew timing after all maybe just like laying sharp make turrets despite not going for that many mutants yeah we've got some uh mutants making their way up here 
Beginning this harassment. Just a low count of Muta so far, though. So, not really diving in. Um, gonna be an option here. He's just going to harass his barracks for a moment. But bunker at the front. Plenty of turrets. Sharp is buttoned up tight here. There's not really a good opening until we've got at least seven, eight mutas to try and make a dive. Yeah, seven mutas is gonna be the threshold where you can start to one-shot those SCVs with their high 60 hit point uh, bank of HP. So. Yeah, so it looks like Hero not going to be having any kind of damage done to Sharp early game. And that's going to, uh, I think Sharp's going to be happy about that. But on the other hand, Hero did make a lot of drones to compensate. So he's not like at a drone deficit. He's mining on three gases, relatively healthy right now. He can still do a muta all in if he wanted to. He could do a three hatch muta all in from this, or he could just do a normal transitional play. So he has a lot of options available to him. And, uh, I think right now he just wants to force out as many turrets as possible, but so far Sharp looks like uh, he's not going to be making too many defenses, just the bare minimal needed to not take too much damage here. Forcing in a couple of stims, looking for an opportunity here. Four turrets in the natural is pretty darn well defended, but uh, could come in and maybe snipe a turret or two, open up a position here. For now, adding on some tech back at home, Hero is going to be uh, switching into those lurkers, getting into a hive as well. Factory is done here with starports on the way, so Sharp making that transition pretty quickly here too. Does start to move forward, but there's a lot of links here along with this big group of mutas. He is going to bring up his reinforcements, taking a good trade. Really good targeting here by Sharp. He's going to bring up a fire bat as well. That really helps out a huge amount against that big group of links. Very nice hold here from Sharp. Actually, a great trade. Look at how few mutas are left. Yeah, this was kind of like a sulky-esque uh, idea from Hero, trying to clean up that viable with the mutaling as cost-efficiently as possible to make the next transitional play that much stronger here. But didn't kind of get that cost-effective trade he was looking for. He lost so many mutas. He had a lot more than 11 there as well. He had at least, I think, about 14 or 15 mutas, maybe even slightly more than that, and a handful of links as well. And he, he lost all but like five or six of those mutas. And... Only just now, uh, Sh Sharp will want to be coming out onto the map, and without too many too many muters, Sharp's going to feel so much more confident. And the lurker timing's a little bit slow, so there's a window where Sharp can actually do some counter pressure here. Dude, Sh Sharp is so good, man. He he totally baited that in. He was out in the front with a small-ish group of muta, or with a small-ish group of uh, marine medic there. And then he fell back to the reinforcements as the army was coming in, and he pulled the, the fire bat out of the bunker, sent it in right at the perfect moment to deal with that big group of links as they were trying to jump on top of the Marines. So, so well played here. The targeting on the mutas as well. Sharp absolutely on fire. And, you know, Hero, he's not dead. He's not in, even in, I would necessarily say, a really bad position, but he lost a lot of mutas and now a marine to make its way over here slick slick play two drone kills super super annoying he really wanted to get a sunken colony there now he lost two drones he's gonna have to send out another drone to make us another sunken colony defiler mound on the way sharp has full map control at this point he's gonna be moving around with the first vessels coming out uh the the mutas will no longer be a threat maybe hero can get a, a group of muta kill here or a group of marines killed off with these mutas and you know s slow things down a little bit more but uh, sharp is gonna have map control very soon and he's gonna just start to explode out take a bunch of bases and really put the pressure onto hero so Coming forward here, he actually dives on top of these Marines, but the reinforcement line too quick. Sharp going to hold on to the re remainder of those Marines and, of course, keeping his medics alive. Very, very important. Pretty decent trade by Hero, though, at the end of the usefulness of those uh, mutas. I mean, overall, I still feel like I ever so slightly favor Hero. I still think this is slightly Hero Edge, but I've, I've been really admiring Sharp's play here. And that one Marine play in the top right was really slick. Not only did he get two drone kills, but he manually body blocked the drone placing down the creep Connolly mm. like, with a manual move command from the Marine just to make sure he got both of those drone snipes as well. Like, a really clean, efficient play from Sharp with just the most bare minimal amount of units 
this. He's trying to get this Overlord. There is one spot where you can shoot it from all angles, so you can guarantee the kill on this Overlord, but it does require perfect mean positioning. But look at these beautiful irradiates softening up most of that Muta stacks. Hero did split those off reasonably well, but only six Mutas are remaining. So now, Sharp, with that map control, going to be able to come out in a big way, but it has bought a lot of time. Uh, Hero has done a good job of like finally getting himself set up. We've now got Defilers out, Lurkers out, Nidus Canal is connected. More Macro Hatchies being thrown down. Now lots of uh, uh, Overlords being spread out to spot for dropships. So Hero's basically got himself set up right now. He's looking pretty strong. Well, uh, I mean, this this is the beginning kind of of the, the point of the time in the game uh, of ZVT where Terran is going to have a bunch of moments where they can start to take advantages, right? Drops are going to be a thing. A constant irradiates are going to be hammering at hero spaces over and over again. A bunch of lurkers are going to transfer over here towards the top right. Looks like they're going to get irradiated. Uh, maybe two or three of them at least. Um, where at this point in the game, Hero would much rather have, you know, all these lurkers in a stack so they can only be irradiated one at a time. That's not going to be the case here. Hero, a little bit slow on having his um, Nidus Canal up, I guess. Not going to be able to just send those through. He has to run them over, and so he ends up losing quite a few of them. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do really like Sharp's position. I think a lot of Terran players would be comfortable playing from there. We've even got this big Lotto ship uh, doom drop going to be occurring in the main base, but look at uh, this from here. It does uh, have just barely enough Muta Scourge to catch this, but Sharp scans and uh, sees that there is some positioning of units here to deal with this. So he's going to come in here with the uh, um, vessels to bait out the Scourge and clear out this zone as much as possible and like you know use up all the anti-air tools that hero has just before coming in with those dropships but now hero kind of senses it when the terran scans it does kind of indicate they want to attack in that location potentially so hero's on top of that and could be forcing sharp to come around into the main base but hero being very fluid now with his army control just been rushing up to this other spot scourge intercepting the dropships as well not getting a full unload off does take out two of them but the, the unload is still going to be occurring but i feel overall hero is going to get the better end of the trade here if sharp does pull down and start to kill off all these drones it will still go pretty good for him and so far the lurkers are not in a position to really prevent that from occurring and he's gonna be killing at least the spawning pool and quite a few drones for his efforts as well oh my goodness he's killing so many drones here he's even getting a few lurkers too oh more and more drones going down and he's opening up this position a lot he's actually loading up more marines and medics right now as we speak uh down at, uh, to the south of this position he's gonna come back in drop some more i don't see any more um scourge at this point so it's just going to be pure lings trying to clean this up it looks like there's just barely enough lings to actually get rid of all this but this this is a serious slowdown for a hero however he already has the base uh, at the natural in the top right and so that means that the base uh the, the fourth gas is going to come up really really fast here really really safe for a hero and he's going to be able to get into that four gas economy super super quick whereas sharp has not added on a fourth base just yet he is floating his factory here so he doesn't have like you know a big mech transition like we would uh, typically see from sharp like what one of the things that i think about sharp when or when i think of sharp's tvz is a, a lot of mines and vultures out on the map at about this time in the game but he's just not opting for that here just sticking purely to sk marine and trying to get the win right now and that might backfire for him dark swarm here the natural he's gonna be okay hero getting further and further into a good position I'm curious if like Sharp's not super confident in playing a straight up macro game against Hero. He knows how strong Hero is at doing this this phase of the game in TVZ. This is like Hero's bread and butter when he gets to this phase of the game. He's just so good at um, like handling pretty much this, the, this, the long sieges that the Terran player can levy against him. Usually you're just leaning on the Zerg for extended minutes of that time, just like constantly irradiating defilers and lurkers and just probing for any kind of weakness to exploit and eventually the the Zerg player makes a mistake and doesn't make a defiler or fails to get a Dark Swarm down and then you finally bust through but here is the kind of player not to make those mistakes it looked like Sharp was kind of banking on some critical damage there but didn't really find it still has a pretty good game state to work with but doesn't have both locations uh, contained only has the left side of the map uh, under somewhat of a control right now and even then Hero is starting to make some uh, way out onto the map and gain some ground going to be sniping up a few of these vessels with the Scourge as well Ooh, the vessel kills are huge right now Sharp Starting to fall apart. You can see his money is really, really high right now. 
And he's gonna lose this dropship, I think, too. There's Scourge over here to deal with this. The drop coming up to the 12 o'clock. That's not really gonna be doing anything. Unloading there uh, up on that high ground. Plagues are coming down here for Hero now, and Sharp is starting to lose control of this game in a big way as more drones hit the top right and Ultras start to hit the production tab. Yeah, I mean, we finally got this fourth base going up for Sharp, but the Zerg having four gases like this, they can make just so many Defilers, Lurkers, and Ultralists. They won't actually need to make hardly any Lurkers at all. You want to make as few Lurkers as possible, and they're going to be dumping that gas into Scourge, into Defilers, and now a, a swelling of Ultralists. You see this massive gas bank we've got built up for Hero. That's a lot of Ultralists. That's eight Ultralists worth of gas just chilling right now, and he's going to start to explode onto the map in a big way soon. Sharp is going to try and switch into battle cruiser now um but he just ate a massive plague on all of his vessels so his vessels are super low if those all end up going down and he's caught building a bunch of battle cruisers he's just not going to have any irradiates for the defilers that will be coming across the map i mean i have really worried worried for sharp right now i feel like he's gonna be experiencing death by a thousand cuts i don't think he's got anything in the works to deal with this as well like he's going into bcs which is probably one of the more standard lines to go from here he doesn't even have a third star port though i don't believe so i'm i'm actually a little bit confused like if you're going into bcs right now with, with this many bases and this many gas like he needs at least three star ports so the fact that he's only got two star ports and he's going bcs I, i'm very confused yeah, this is this is a little bit awkward here. Um, the the money is not going to be getting spent, I think, with this many gases, with four gases. I I guess he hasn't even taken the fourth gas yet. Um, just taking three gases for now. Um, producing off of two star ports though, you can definitely produce off of three on three gas, four on four gas. Uh, still another two minutes before either of these gases start to run out. So, yeah, it doesn't quite make sense here, but Sharp, where are those first few battle cruisers going to go? Is he just going to send them to the main? How is he going to be controlling here? That'll be a critical part of this uh, uh, upcoming fight. I imagine the BCs will just, uh, you know, beeline all the way vertically to the main and just try and shut down as much gas mining as possible and, you know, force as much scourge as possible. But look at this big train of Ultralists coming into the th third base location. There's three bunkers, though, to soak up, but only one of them is actually loaded up, so if all three of the bunkers were loaded up, he actually probably would have dealt with this somewhat cost-efficiently, but as a result, these Ultras aren't getting softened up enough with the, the Radiates, so they'll survive long enough to cause mayhem, force the SUVs to run away, kill a few SUVs, and be a lot more annoying than they would have otherwise if all three of those bunkers had been filled. Am I missing something? Where are the battle cruisers right now? They, they just haven't popped out I don't yet? I think he's making them. Wow. It, I, he's not making them. He's, he's probably still just making vessels because he needs to because of how much gas he's got banked up right now, how many barracks he's producing out of. And he's not getting this uh, much mining going on because of like these small plays that are happening and he's forcing to, to like, delay his mining a little bit. So he's not got quite the production that he wants. And I feel like he's neglecting making VCs as a result. Well, you know what? We're being pretty darn weak wasteful here with the ultras uh, of hero right he sent in like five ultras to the bottom left and they all got irradiated and then killed and then he sent like eight ultras to the bottom left and they all just got dominated by the marines they did trade but uh, like now he, I mean, he's got so much map pressure is it even gonna matter i'm not sure well, this is the thing, it's like, if Sharp can be active on the map and prevent the Defilers reaching this base at the 6 o'clock, it's fine. But because of how much pressure he's done to Sharp, now the Defiler's going to be able to get to the 6 o'clock location. And that's going to that's gonna delay mining here. And now we're going to have a little bit of problems with Sharp because the Zerg is free to start double expanding and just ramping up production. Meanwhile, the Terran is still in, like, kind of like a crisis mode. I mean, the supplies are even right now. BCs are finally out on the field, but not able to shut down any of the gas mining of the Zerg just yet. And... Hero's got him on in this like just isolated in the small quadrant of the map. It looks like a lot like Artosis's games on his streams right now, and I'm not sure that's going to favor him going forward. Well, uh, despite the um, jab at Artosis, I think that this is kind of an inevitable situation to be in if you uh, aren't able to get battle cruisers across the map to start pressuring the the Zerg player, right? Like. If you don't have something going on the Zerg side of the map, then and they're just free to keep sending stuff at you and splitting off defilers and running around and you know not getting irradiated, uh, this is this is what happens. This is exactly as things 
are meant to be in this matchup. And look at this, another bunker empty. Dude, so many things are going wrong right now for Sharp. Um, the third starport did just come online, but it is so, so late. Oh, God, this one uh, ultra is going to get so much damage here in the mineral line. That's crazy. Yeah, saying, you know what, that was a little bit fair to say, like, uh, about Artosis there. There's, there's just no way he would have had four bases at this point in the game. So I have to give you that. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Chill out there, bud. <laughs> okay, we got uh, a couple more Ultralis coming into the natural, and this is just the state of the game right now. It's, um... Barely, Sharp barely holding on and not able to really get out on the map at all, even dealing with those uh, attacks right into his natural base. And oh my god, is there going to be a big plague here? I think we just missed it, but um, we might have gotten a huge plague on this army uh, over on, this, on the left-hand side. It's just so grouped up right now. There's so much that he's dealing with. Okay, there it is right there. God damn, that's so much damage from this plague. Um, we're yeah, past, that's a lot of chimpanzees. Yeah, we're past the, past the 21 minute mark, so we are going to start running into these gases, but Hero getting more gas online. He's got the 12 o'clock online. He's going to shut down the 6 o'clock once again. I look at 12 o'clock, actually. There's not a lot here. So this is a lot of damage uh, being done to uh, Hero, at least. But without these bases being fully operational for Sharp, the only thing really going for him is the fact that he's got this huge bank to work with. So there is a bit of, bit of life here for Sharp. We can shut down this base, maybe kill this hatchery. There'd be something in it for him, but he's not going to get this hatchery. He's going to be cleaned up once again. And uh, we're going to be in a situation where the Zergs just way ahead in supply, way ahead in economy, and just unable... To, the virus has spread. We've, we've been unsuccessful in quarantining. We might as well just let people go out into the parks and enjoy what time they have left on this planet, okay? Yeah, it looks like the battle cruisers up here not really going to get anything done, unfortunately. The double spore are going to deal with that, and Sharp just fizzling out here slowly but surely. I hate to say it, man. I hate to say it. But Sharp is just running out of time here. Some mistakes were made. There are definitely some holes that need to be filled before, you know, uh, moving in into another game against Hero, man. You just can't make these mistakes against a player of this caliber. Mm. Hero is just so dominating in these late game scenarios. This is exactly where he wants to be. And this is his element. He's happy to play these types of games all day long and uh one of the reasons why he's such a scary player is like you can never just count on the fact that oh maybe i'll get him later because he's not so strong in the late game no it's halfway around you want to get this guy in the mid game so that he doesn't get into his full macro swing because once he does get going he's just such a powerhouse well, Hero, I mean, look at how much gas he's, he's mining right now. It's crazy. He's actually spending all of it as well, which is a testament to how skilled he is in these late game scenarios. It's really rare for a Zerg player to get up to like, uh, you know, five, six gas geysers. But here it is. This is what it looks like. And with a player... Uh, as proficient with the macro as Hero, even with, you know, such spread out hatcheries everywhere, there's not enough uh, hotkeys for everything to be ha to, to be easily macroed. Still, Hero is keeping that gas super, super low, and he's surrounding the army, controlling everything beautifully. Looks like this final army of Sharp is going to get finally cleared out here. And there's just no progress to be made. He will have to fall back across the map. And the ultra number is growing and growing and growing. Wow, this rock solid play of Hero going to be dulling sharp. And he's going to have to tap out GG. The last Terran player has been eliminated. And instead, it's going to be up to Bisu to try and carry the torch as the lone survivor for his race. And it must be a lonely situation to be like the last tribe of Protoss out in space and not have any other tribes to have like some in-house like confrontations with instead just being having to deal with like strong, powerful swarms of Zerg being controlled by the hive mind dictated to by the Cerebral interfacing of hero and sulky my faith has been shaken slightly after that last game sharp gets taken out by here i hope that sharp is uh not feeling the same sort of uh, shakiness here i hope he puts out some great games and 
the future in those big tournaments um, as we move into this next one. We got Bisu. You were just saying about how the final Protoss player is going to be holding down the fort, uh, you know, out into the darkness against these two Zerg players. I mean, who could, who better could you ask for than Bisu to, to face down the likes of Hero and Solki? I mean, I would elect Bisu to be my defender of Aya if there was the likes of Hero and Solki going to be laying siege to our last bastion, our homeworld. It's going to have to be Bisu. If it's anyone, it's Bisu. This is the OG of PVZ, okay? This is not no clown, all right? This is like Charlie Brown kind of OG right now. Bisu, godlike in this matchup. I mean, Hero has to try it. I mean, he, he has to overcome players like this. He has to overcome um, Bisu if he wants to win an ASL. So let's see what he's got. This is a great opportunity for him to prove that he's capable of matching that level. Great job dealing that early damage here to the probe so far. He is not going to be losing that dre uh, the early drone this time for sure. And he put a lot of damage onto that early probe. Yeah, he already got into the hold points on that. It was actually close to dying. It was, I think, two hits from dying when the probe managed to get away. So it's probably about half HP right now with uh, some shields recharging. So it will be even easier to kill with these initial links as well. He forced, so, yeah, I would say he's, he forced the pylon yeah, too. Forced the pylon, yeah, right? Like yeah. he, he would like to just block that with the probe. Um, but with that much damage on it, he couldn't continue to like dive in and stop the hatchery. So he had to build the the pylon to to guarantee the block. And um, I mean that slows everything down. And Hero's only built four lings. He sent them across. He sees now that there's a cannon, so he will send those lings back. But you know he's going to be 100% fine here. It doesn't really hurt Hero that he had to put his uh, hatchery over at the third base instead of the natural. Yeah, for, for the viewers at home, what happened there was um, just to be sure that Bisu wasn't being super greedy, he sent his lings uh, across map and just ignored the probe scout until the Overlord could confirm that the cannon was finishing on time. Because if it wasn't, there'd be a small window to punish and maybe get a run by or kill a probe potentially. So, yeah, just making sure that Bisu's not being uh, greedy here does still run down that probe and kill it at a pretty reasonable time. As we can see here, it already was softened up uh, earlier on, just on eight hit points, so very quick to be dealt with, even just with falling. So even someone with Bisu's level of micro, not gonna be able to keep that alive forever. Damn, you feel so good as a Zerg player when you can pick off that early pro uh, the probe that early. Um, yeah. The early harassment with blocking the hatchery means nothing now because he can do whatever he wants and there's really nothing that Bisu can do to find out about it with the ling sitting out here in the front he knows if there's a probe going out on the map and he's gonna keep the blindfold on bisu here while going for hydralis den yeah and bisu i'm actually a little bit um sad to see that when that probe went down he didn't immediately send another probe scout out onto the map because one thing you can do as protoss in these situations is just hide the the follow-up probe scout so you can then come in and uh, confirm whether or not this was a hatchery being thrown down how many drones are mining at the third base and what have you and kind of glean whether or not this is going to be a hydro pressure build out from hero which it certainly is going to be he's instead going to be relying on creating space with these first two zealots and then sending out this delayed probe scout but now it's much more likely to be denied by hero but so far it looks like there is a still a window for him to slip by these links if Hero's not on top of it oh hero not on top of it indeed he's actually gonna let this go by oh can he actually get in the main no blocked blocked from getting into the main but maybe bisu can loop around um with the zealots coming to the third and then bring the um the the pro back into the main no it's not gonna happen he does get on top of these drones, though, and he will be able to hide the drones behind the mineral patch, which is almost as good as finding out about this Hydra Den, because you can see exactly how many drones pop out here at the third. Yeah, he sees that there's only three mining at the third. There's sometimes you can um, like obfuscate the build order by have less mining in the main and having more mining at your third and natural to kind of trick the Protoss into thinking that you're not doing this. But as it stands, we're not doing that as Hero right now. We, we've just like done a very standard 973, and he's actually not even done the prerequisite 973 drones. He's got a lot less drones than that. He's only got 
got a couple of drones mining his natural expansion. This is a much faster timing, relying primarily on Zerglings to help bolster the power spike of these Hydras, just trying to make the bare minimal amount of Hydras to bust down these first two cannons like we were talking about in the previous games. Dude, Bisu sees the three, and he's not reacting properly. He only built one cannon, and now he's going to see the Hydras. He realizes his mistake here. He's starting to throw down some emergency cannons, but I'm not sure it's going to be on time. A lot of lings here. Only two zealots to, bu to, to buffer right now. He's not pulling his probes. He does now finally start to pull them, but he's going to lose these two cannons right away. They're right up against that wall. Some more cannons are going to be finishing up at the back, but the probes are not in the wall. Oh, God, the links are going to get by. That's a huge oh, mistake. Really yeah, it's a huge wow. mistake for Bisu. Now the links can target fire down the cannons, which usually wouldn't be able to be uh, shot down so quickly by the Hydras. Doesn't have any kind of timing of these additional cannons being uh, finishing up now. Bisu probably knows he's in trouble right now. He's just trying to see if he can figure out any way of stabilizing because it is his last lifeline at getting a win for the Protoss here. So he's going to try everything he can to see if he can figure out some way of defending. But I don't think it's going to be transpiring here for him. It looks like far too much of a flood of... Uh, uh, Hydras and Lings to deal with here. It's really unfortunate for B, so I expected a little bit more out of him, to be honest with you. He's going to be tapping out. GG finally called. Wow! How good is Hero saying? Oh, man. Hero. He is a good bet right now, guys. Hero is incredibly strong, as shown here in this week of KCM. He is at the top of his game. Not getting an all kill, but putting out a great showing here. Taking down a lot of fantastic Terran and Protoss players. I'm really impressed with him. Yeah, I mean, I can't rate this guy highly enough. Like, unironically, he's, despite being so good and known to be so good, I would still argue he's the most underrated pro player that we've got right now. Despite how already highly rated he is, I would still argue he's criminally underrated. The points have converged here on our point ranking graph. We've got for week number two, all players sitting here at equal number. Um, it's great. It's great to see finally a, K a KCM season where one team is just not dominating. Yeah, I mean, I'm super excited for where this season's going to go, to be honest with you. Like, on the one hand, we might see this, like, nail-biter three-way thing going on. But I think, at the very least, we may see a, a close point battle from at least two of the races going forward. And I'm curious how that's going to develop. And at the very least, we haven't seen this before and would like this trend to at least continue for some time. Unfortunately, we're not going to get... That final game. It's been a while since I put a anti-spoiler at the end of a KCM, but um, we're going to have that anti-spoiler there. Probably a, a reversed game on mute. Um, yeah, I hope you guys appreciate that. I, I feel like... I, I don't understand why other tournaments don't um, have that sort of... Ha haven't caught on to that sort of thing yet. Like, It really annoys me when I see yeah. uh, ASL, or I'm watching an ASL video, and I can see that there's you know, one game has been played and there's clearly not enough time left in the video for there to be a win on the other side. Do you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean saying. I think we even had this same conversation of like a couple of months ago or something or a few weeks ago. And uh, yeah, I basically said something to the effect of like, this is not even like a new thing. Like people knew about anti-spoilers from like over a decade ago. And I'm so surprised that it kind of fell out of trend and like it kind of dropped out of being a standard. And I think that it's uh, commendable that you're at least being one of the only bastions of hope in the community that seems to like have their heads screwed on tightly enough to actually try and like, you know, create that new standard again, because I mean, play, people are smart enough to like, you know, figure that to reverse engineer and figure out what happened with it. So having those anti spoilers is like kind of crucial to, you know, the, the people who are slightly more vigilant, or don't just like, you know, ruin their day by giving them a little bit of information they don't want to have, you know, I think the only way to avoid it is to download some like anti-spoiler software. You can get like an add-on onto your browser that won't allow you to see the YouTube bar, the the like uh, what's it called, the progress bar on the YouTube video. Um, also, you could just watch the entire video start to finish without ever looking at the YouTube bar. Like just have it full screen um, and never press any buttons. <laughs> like that's the, yeah, those are the only yeah. two options. 
But yeah, just having an extra little bit at the end to keep you guessing, I think is uh, should be a standard. I'm surprised that it's not. Um, but we're going to try and start a little trend here, see if it catches on. I mean, I think you should, and uh, it needs to catch on because uh, it is kind of shocking that it hasn't already. And it, it used to be a thing, and the fact that it's not now is a little bit concerning. I think people are just a little bit, uh, you know, not necessarily thinking about these types of things and glossing over some fundamentals in the in the scene that we need to, you know, we should be the we should be the mouthpiece to to voice this and to present this as being the standard. And if people follow, that's great. But I think we should still do our own thing and like you know force it in our in our neck of the woods at the very least, right? And these type of topics are going to be discussed on our podcast, guys. The Doom Drop. We're going to be doing, uh, I guess, episode number five. Five. Is going on to episode number yeah. five, and we're going to have that coming out to you very, very soon. Um. Maybe going to have some guests coming on shortly as well. So if you guys enjoy this uh, show that we do here every week, uh, Shun and I have a lot of great conversations uh, and now on a podcast as well. So definitely check that out. Uh, any last words to say, Shun, before we wrap this up? No, it's a pleasure to be here as always, guys. Um, always have fun casting with saying, and uh, I'm looking forward to a great season and uh, a nice week three, and uh, looking forward to seeing the rest of the ASL, which we will give no spoilers on. Yeah, Thanks, it's uh, <laughs> it's tough not to to spoil anything. We're following along very closely. Um, I'm personally watching the Tastosis cast, and um. It it comes out a little bit after, so I'm really trying not to spoil myself. I don't want to give spoilers to you guys. I was spoiled earlier in the season, and it was a real pain. So I'm trying not to do that for any of you guys. Now, that's it for week number two of the KCM Season 2 of 2024, guys. We'll see you next time.